Hi, did I miss anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, with that, I'm delighted to introduce Jeremy Furrow with Roast Busters Coffee, and he is in uniform today, which is much appreciated, and I can't wait to hear your story. So, Jeremy. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> Glad everyone dressed up for the occasion, so thank you. Um, so, yeah, I am Jeremy. Um, so, uh, we, we started Roast Busters. This is it. This is, uh, we are a mobile coffee catering vendor. Um, we have the ability to go where coffee shops can't, which is anywhere. Um, we, uh, I've been in and out of the coffee industry for uh, the better part of 12, 13 years. Um, I've had two coffee businesses in the past. Uh, I actually uh, went to the University of Lincoln um, and in my junior, tail end of junior year, I decided entrepreneurship was where I wanted to go. And uh, at that time, entrepreneurship was not a, uh, a focus. Um, business marketing is kind of where I landed and in my senior year I started a specialty coffee catering service called Kinetic Brew. Um, I was actually working at Starbucks at the time and when I got there I after training and and uh, kind of hanging out for a little bit I thought I, I think I can do this and uh, one of the guys I was working with uh, kind of felt the same way so we got together and Kinetic Brew was born. Um, we were a specialty coffee catering service available uh, to go really anywhere. Uh, we did wedding receptions, uh, birthday parties, uh, I think we did a bar mitzvah, um, a handful of uh, kind of small corporate events, and, um, and that en ended up turning into a coffee shop uh, against, uh, against what we had kind of sought out to do, which was to uh, maintain a mobility factor. Um, we still continued to do the catering, even though we were in a, in a spot. Um, what we wanted to do was set ourselves apart, uh, so we were never called a coffee shop. Uh, we called ourselves a coffee stop. Uh, we had the first walk-up window in Lincoln, um, right off of uh, O Street. So we were actually in the State Theater uh, at the time. Uh, now it's the Bourbon. But um, uh, ended up doing that for a couple of years and uh, took a slightly different direction career-wise and uh, couldn't really get away from coffee. So in 2012, uh, 2011, I came back to it with uh, a company called Gojo. Uh, we were a mobile coffee unit. Um, we took an old ambulance and uh, ret uh, retrofitted it with running water and power. And we were, uh, I believe at that time, we were the second uh, mobile coffee shop in Lincoln. Uh, the first was something called Coffee Ambulance uh, that was uh, back in the early 1990s. Um, that was really just set up for Husker games. Um, they turned into a, a roaster and uh, kind of shut down the mobile side of things. And then I picked up uh, about a decade and a half uh, later. With, uh, with Gojo. Um, Gojo was a labor of love. Uh, learned a lot through that process and uh, ended up having to shut that down for a number of reasons, but even though uh, we didn't make it to where I wanted to get to, which was I had this grandiose vision for a fleet of Gojos, right? So uh, between Lincoln and Omaha and kind of, you know, taking the Midwest by storm. Um, big dreams, uh, small budget, and uh, not a lot to work with. So. Um, everything I did there, I was working full time uh, at a, a Sprint, actually. I was a retail manager for a Sprint store here in town. And so working full time there, every off time I had, I was working on the ambulance. Uh, ended up roll painting it in my driveway, actually. Um, so I mean, when you talk about a shoestring budget, there's really no better definition than roll painting an ambulance in your driveway um, with a uh, Rust-Oleum paint. Um, but in any case, uh, that, that, that actually, uh, I, I think there was a, an inkling of an idea there. Um, so even though that didn't pan out like I thought it would, um, uh, the, the idea really never left me. So even after I shut that down and liquidated, I, uh, I started researching equipment. I thought maybe there was something I did a little bit, I could have done a little bit differently equipment wise to make things a little bit easier. Uh, when you think about a mobile coffee shop, you're taking you know, a, a fixed unit uh, with, uh, with an unlimited power and water source and putting it into something that doesn't have that. Um, so, you know, the equipment and, uh, and the overall usage of, of power and water access and everything was, uh, every, every situation was a little bit different. Some places I had to plug in, some places I used my generator, and in, uh, in all places I, I was always just a little bit on edge, just hoping nothing went wrong, right? Um, at the time, there wasn't really anybody that I could kind of connect with uh, locally. Um, mobile coffee shops have always been a thing, um, really since Starbucks kind of hit, uh, hit the streets, but larger cities is really primarily where those uh, kicked in with uh, a lot more outdoor events and uh, a lot more stuff going on. 
Lincoln, uh, Lincoln wasn't really that at that time. And, uh, and so in the process of kind of researching equipment, because I knew I would come back to it when I didn't know, but I knew I would get back. Um, I, I thought maybe I could actually find a, a wearable espresso machine. Um, and as crazy as that sounds, it, it is absolutely crazy. It do, does not exist. And I thought, well, maybe I could build it. Um, nope, can't build it. Um, but in the midst of that, I found this. Um, so this is called the Drinkman Vario 2. Um, it is a, uh, a unit that is specifically designed for still beverages, hot or cold. And um, this is the only backpack of its kind that offers two tanks. Um, so you'll see a lot of like the Rocket Man packs at stadiums and large events, uh, usually selling liquor or beer or uh, soda, something like that. Um, and it's, it's really just this giant, you know, sometimes it's, it's as big as five gallons. And, uh, and that wasn't really what I had in mind because uh, insulation wasn't, uh, wasn't utilized and, and it really limited the drink menu. So to go from, uh, you know, essentially a full scale coffee shop menu, uh, 14, 15, 20 different drinks to one backpack, I really had to, uh, had to think things through. So um, ended up landing on, uh, on this backpack and I thought, you know, Right when I saw it, the first thing that came to mind was a proton pack from Ghostbusters. Anybody familiar, right? Um, you know, down to the, the, the neutrino wand right here. But uh, um, so I, I kind of instantly formed this, this, this concept and, um, and sat on it. Uh, you know, money came and went. And, you know, right when I thought I was ready to do it, something else came up. Uh, daughter was born, you know, all those things kind of take place and uh, it just never really worked out. But every so often I kept coming back to the idea. I kept it on my Google Drive uh, in, a, in a folder I had to keep hiding deeper and deeper <laughs> because every time I'd go in there I'd see it and I'd open it and hours have gone by before I realized it. And, uh, and so I just kept refining the, the model. And what I started out with was a, a fairly expensive startup cost because I wanted to make sure I had absolutely everything taken care of. I wanted a mobile brewing unit. Um, I didn't want to have a, a sit down of any kind. I didn't want to have a shop, or even a fill-up station. I wanted everything to, to maintain mobility. And mobility, with mobility comes cost. Um, and so, you know, we started out with, uh, with a potential startup cost of about $45,000. And that was to put four of these on the street with uh, two mobile brewing units. Um, and I thought, man, that would be really cool. I could definitely see that happening. You know, cost projections five years out. Everything looked really good. Um, but I didn't have $45,000, and so I kind of shelved it and every so often kept coming back to it. That number kept dropping because I realized every time I went back to it, I didn't need something. There was something that I wanted, but I didn't need. Um, and it got down to the point where uh, just this past year, uh, the beginning of the year, I, I stumbled on it again, uh, ran the numbers again, actually worked with, uh, uh, met with a couple people, um, and uh, actually Daniel was one of the big proponents uh, of kind of helping me realize that I don't need to have everything figured out to start something that I want to do. Um, and so I whittled it down from $45,000 to about $3,500. Um, oh. and, and in the midst of, thank you. <laughs> uh, and in the midst of that, um, actually through, uh, through church, we, uh, w my wife and I hosted a small group that was an entre entrepreneurship based interest group. Uh, we just really wanted to connect with entrepreneurs because, uh, you know, coffee aside, I, I love small business. I love uh, the ideation process and kind of working through that. Oddly enough, I love spreadsheets. Um, and uh, you wouldn't think by looking at me, but yeah, number, numbers are fun. Um, and uh, and uh, the, I never intended to bring the idea up. I, I wanted to make this about them, not me. Um, but in the midst of that, my wife actually brought it up uh, kind of slyly. And of course, everyone peeked up. What's, what's Roastbusters, Jeremy? And uh, so I kind of went into it, and of course, when you're excited about something, you show it, right? So I got excited again, and uh, that night I went back to the numbers. Uh, I actually had a few people from that group uh, jokingly, in my mind, say, where do we invest? Um, how can we invest? And I said, oh, Larry, that's hilarious. Uh, but <laughs> next week, uh, that same question, how can we invest? Um, and then the week following, how can we invest? And so I, I realized, uh, you know, probably the hard way that Larry was being serious. Um, but through that group, um, I raised uh, enough capital, private funding, to, uh, to get everything going. One of the caveats to it was to be ready by the first Husker home game. Um, so by the time I got my final funding check uh, to the first Husker home game was about five weeks. 
Um, and at that time, I hadn't yet settled on a name. I hadn't yet settled on a logo. I had a, a, about three folders worth of potential names and logos, um, all of which were garbage, according to my wife. Um, but she was actually the one that pulled one of those that looked very similar to this. She crafted this, the branding, uh, everything, everything, social media, she, she runs everything that we do. Um, but in that five weeks, um, I mean, just about everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, and uh, to the point where the manufacturer uh, actually tried to back out of the sale. Um, uh, there's a little bit of a language barrier there. And uh, I had not really done any overseas transactions to date. And so I had a lot of questions. I, I, it was a good amount of money. I didn't want to lose it. Didn't want to have to kind of come back to the people and say, hey, that money, I misplaced it. Um, but uh, they, uh, it, was, it was really just a language barrier because uh, even though um, this company I had actually been in communication with for about eight years and I had been working with the same person year over year, uh, just keep, kept coming back asking for quotes, making sure nothing really changed dr drastically. Um, and they, uh, they, called, uh, they emailed me and said, after discussing it with my business partner, we're going to back out. Um, uh, good luck to you, but this is kind of where we're at. Because I had so many questions about, do you take PayPal? Can I pay you with a card? Do you Venmo? You know, all these things. And it was a bank transfer that they wanted. Um, and I just didn't know how to navigate that. So um, I ended up adding the international calling plan to my phone so that I could call them uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning here. And, um, and be able to actually have a conversation after almost eight years of communicating. And um, they, they understood completely where I was at. Um, I think they just needed to, to, to talk to me, uh, not talk to me. Um, so uh, we got all that taken care of. Um, uh, the first run of uh, cups that we ordered wasn't right. Um, the first uh, run of stickers wasn't right. Um, you know, everything that, like I said, everything that could go wrong did go wrong in the span of five weeks. Um, but we were ready to go by the first Husker home game. Um, we got everything lined up, everything was ready to go. Uh, we had to tailor the suit ourselves. Um, this, uh, this is not something you can get off the shelf uh, to the point where we even put the piping in, um, which I actually tried seven times to put the piping in myself before I threw it against the wall, called up my sister and said, hey, can I ask a favor? It's weird, but can you do this? Um, and uh, so yeah, this is, this is what we landed on. Um, and, we were ready to go by the first home game, and I had fully anticipated on selling through about 25 gallons of between hot and cold coffee, which I had readily available and prepared in the back of my car. Um, I sold through about six gallons, um, which uh, to some, and you know, right off the cuff, you may think, darn, that's not great. And you're right, it's not. But we had so much exposure um, to close to, I'm going to guess, 60,000 people walked past me or I walked past them and caught their attention. Um, that day, we had about 45 additional followers across our social media platforms. Uh, we had, uh, you know, in the, in the days following, probably in the next five to six days, we had increased the number of likes on our Facebook page by about 250. Um, and we had started getting some questions about what is it what, that we do. Um, so we had fully anticipated really launching for Husker season and just kind of getting to the end of the season and, and hopefully having a model that, that was repeatable and, and scalable. Um, within the first couple of games, I realized that uh, Husker season isn't necessarily what I thought it would be um, for a couple different reasons. A, I mean, these are brand new waters we're navigating um, to the point where when, I, when we went for licensing and discussed with the state and the health department, they said, ah, we'll have to call you back because this is weird. And uh, it's exciting, but it's weird. Um, and so I am, I am a licensed food truck, uh, believe it or not. And, uh, and uh, there, there was something that was kind of, that had set a, a loose precedent. He was called the Grill Walker. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but a guy who actually had a wearable grill who would walk around downtown and uh, sell hot dogs. Um, he was the first one to kind of do anything like what I'm doing, um, only I took it from grilling to brewing. And, um, and so this is kind of where we landed. But um, I would say every single time we go out, we learn something new um, to the point where uh, we are uh, actually in talks with a company out of Chicago um, uh, looking at a custom creamer um, for us. Uh, uh, we are, my family, we're plant-based. Uh, we've been plant-based for about two years. And so um, one of the first things that we wanted to do was make sure we had a uh, dairy-free creamer. And we bought the first one that we found because it was hard enough to find this one. Um, and then we came across a company out of Chicago called Unicreamer um, that makes uh, a 
plant-based uh, creamer that actually, uh, it's smart creamer. So it's got three grams of protein. It's got MCT oil to help drive the focus and kind of hone in on that, that, that jolt that you get from the caffeine boost. Um, and it's also got some sunflower extract to make it uh, just a little bit more creamy than most creamers. Um, and uh, we are, they are just as small as we are, believe it or not. They've been in business for about two years. And uh, it's just the two sisters that, rent, that run that organization. And we are going to be one of their first partners um, actually in the field. Uh, they have a lot of coffee shops, but they don't have any caterers or mobile uh, situations. So uh, we are that close to buttoning that up. And uh, hopefully here within the next few weeks, keep an eye on our social media and we'll make that announcement. Um, things are going to look a little bit different for me because I've actually got, uh, that's, a, that's a whole different situation, but um, for, the, for, the, for all intents and purposes, we, we wanted to do something different. Uh, we wanted to not necessarily shock the culture of coffee, but we wanted to, uh, to really take what people come to know and, and understand and show them that there's something that, different. There's a different side to what you, what you understand. Um, I've, never, I've, I've never really been an inside-the-box person. Um, in fact, I've blown up the box a few times, and I think this may be uh, one of those times that I can't put it back together. Um, but that being said, we are a couple months old, and uh, we have already had a couple people interested in, uh, in franchising, um, taking it to Kansas City and Washington State. So we're uh, very excited about just uh, the minimal, exp uh, minimal really marketing that we've done and the, the reach that we've had. Um, in terms of uh, really just social media. I mean, we, we've had a couple interviews, uh, been in the paper, uh, been in the Daily Nebraskan, but for the most part, I, this is a part-time gig. I work full-time at Emeritus, just up the street. Um, so I am an events-only person, um, and this is a, a one-man operation, essentially. But uh, we have big plans, and um, I'm guessing by the, this time next year, you'll see about three or four more of us roaming the streets uh, with, a, with a, little bit, a, little bit, a little bit of theme music. <laughs> have yet have yet to settle on it, but we'll see what, what we got. But that's our story. That's that's uh, we we've been in the works for close to a decade, and here we are. How do you take money? Um, so I've got a couple different options. Um, I can do Square, Venmo, Apple Pay, uh, Cash. Um, that was actually one of the things we had to navigate. How much do we charge, right? So uh, yes, we're we're uh, a convenience option, right? There's definitely a factor there. Um, but it's still just coffee. It's hot and cold brew coffee. So I figured if we're going to do a minimal menu, we're going to do those things really well. So it is a, what we consider a premium cup. Um, and uh, so for the first game, we said $4 a cup. And it went over pretty well. Um, and then I got into a little bit of trouble with the university. Um, I had uh, reached out to try to get a vendor booth. Um, and they said, actually, we've been meaning to call you. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Uh, why is that? Well, we've had some people send pictures of you selling on campus, and you can't do that. And I said, oh, were the pictures good? <laughs> um, so after, after a long conversation there, um, it's, a, it's definitely a relationship that, uh, that I'd like to build. They just haven't added a new vendor in 15 years. Um, and every, every year, that the, the amount of requests piles up even greater than the year before. Um, so I didn't expect to, to just waltz on and be this different thing that everyone would say, yes, we want you here. Um, but that, uh, that posed a problem, right? So I've been walking around the stadium, and uh, you know, a good amount of my business was from immediately outside the stadium at the tailgates. And um, so to not be able to do that really <coughs> had me you know, rethink the whole process. Um, so I actually pulled, a, pulled a, an old play out of my playbook from Kinetic Brew. When we, if, is anyone, did anyone go to Kinetic Brew? Is anyone kind of familiar with that? What so it was, a, it was 14th and 0 in the old State Theater. Um, oh, but oh, no. we instituted, uh, I did all the marketing and everything there, so uh, we instituted something called You Call the Shots Fridays, where customers paid what they wanted to for their drink, what they thought it was worth. Yes, you had the menu board, you had suggested retail pricing, but ultimately, if you think it's worth that, go ahead. If you think it's worth less or more, whatever. I, we didn't balk at a single price uh, or uh, a single transaction. And those were our best sales days by far. Um, putting the power in the hands of the consumer changes that uh, mentality, that wall comes down, and then they're like, hey, you know what, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I'll give you maybe a little bit more or you know, at least the, the same amount that you would normally charge. <laughs> So when uh, ESPN College Game Day decided to come down uh, a couple weeks ago, um, I thought I can't not be there. 
Um, so I had to figure out a way to be there without being there, right? Um, so uh, I brought back You Call the Shots, and I didn't actively sell. I, obviously, I went down like this. People kind of got the idea. I normally have about a six-foot flag that says hot or cold brew coffee on it. Obviously, not going to work out in here. But um, I, would, I just kind of, you know, I was a ghost in the crowd, no pun intended. Um, and... Uh, and people got the idea, and when they said how much, I said it up to you. And you know, the first couple people were very weirded out by that. And uh, you know, I got a, a dollar here, a dollar there, and then eventually st people started understanding what it was that I was doing. And and then uh, I averaged about six dollars a cup that day. Um, and so now, instead of having a set, um, I guess, event price like that, uh, that's what we're doing. It's up to you. You pay what you want. Uh, we have some set catering prices. Uh, that's a little bit different story, but for any outdoor event like that, um, it's going to be up to you. What Sorry? size cup? 12 ounce. Are you, do you have your model figured out yet for investors? I don't uh, know if you remember me, but I, I do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was going to talk to you afterwards, but uh, um, yeah, um, so we're, we're very close, uh, very close to having a, 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 an actual plan for someone to come in who has no idea what they're doing to pick this up. One of the things that, that uh, I've been told, um, and, and I'm, I'm very much so inclined to agree with, is when you look at a franchise, you have to be able to see yourself doing it, right? So I've got a, a friend who owns a gym franchise. Awesome. That means I would have to go to the gym, and I don't necessarily want to do that. But then you've got to deal with uh, all, the, all the equipment and you know liability, and there's all those things, right? So not everyone can see themselves as a gym owner. Um, however, with something like this, you can, you can picture yourself uh, in a couple different roles, right? So I mean, you can strap on a backpack if you, and walk around, you can sell coffee, you can do this, you can do what I'm doing. Um, or you could be the behind the scenes and you can just hire four or five people to do this and just run a team. Um, and so we've got someone who's interested in running a team uh, more so than anything and then someone else who's interested in growing a team from the inside out. So um, it's just, to, to answer your question, we're 90% of the way there, absolutely. Yes. How heavy is that pack filled full of coffee? When it's full, it's about 55 pounds. 55. So this little dance I do is actually muscle memory. Um, <laughs> I can't stay, can't stay too static. Jeremy, would this program work for um, nonprofit fundraising that you could, would you trust your equipment, let's say, for a group that four kids go out and sell coffee for a fundraiser for their mission? <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if, if, as long as you can bear the weight, um, you know, safely. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a huge thing. Um, uh, one thing that I, throughout this process, I mean, we, again, a couple months worth of process, but uh, I have really looked at it one dimensionally. You know, this is a coffee backpack, um, but it's also a vessel. Um, so if someone wanted to rent the backpack and put hot chocolate or apple cider for, a, let's say, a pumpkin patch, um, that would be something that we could talk about. Um, one thing that uh, I'm pretty big on is, is um, even though the tanks are food grade, um, there's always that possibility of the flavor carrying over. So different tanks for different drinks. And uh, the idea of expanding the menu is definitely there with multiple people. Obviously, I can't put four tanks on one pack. That would be ridiculous, right? Um, but if I had two people with four different drinks, now all of a sudden I've doubled my menu. Um, and uh, and that can just kind of extrapolate with the more people and uh, but but again one thing I've realized throughout all of this this whole coffee entrepreneurial journey is that I, I have a very big vision I can see the future I can see where things are going um, but I can only walk so far um, so it's the baby steps that I've really had to dial back and focus on and make sure that I don't misstep before getting to that vision um, because I put the cart before the horse a couple times now, and it's I, I've learned from it for sure. Um, do you have to when you empty that? Do you have to go back to your car and absolutely, uh, yeah, and pick up now? Do you brew it again, or is the coffee I'm drinking brewed yesterday? Um, and good question. Uh, not yesterday, uh, this morning. Um, so everything is brewed same day. Um, and I always brew it within uh, about 30, 45 minutes of the event. Um, so these, uh, these tanks are triple insulated and then they're surrounded by insulation. So they lose temperature about a degree every 45 minutes. Um, so they stay, uh, what, whatever it goes in temperature wise, it stays. And then on top of that for refills, I have uh, those catering Cambros, those big brown, 
in, well insulated. They actually, I've done some tests with those. They say 12 hours. Uh, in reality, it's actually more like 36. Uh, they'll actually maintain temperature, um, but that 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 doesn't mean that it's still that quality you know cup that I want. So uh, every event that I do, I brew it right before I go, and then it, if I if there's the need for extra, I do have some on board. And one choice, right? I have hot coffee and I have cold brew coffee. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep. Unlike Starbucks, where you've got so many options, it's overwhelming. Yeah, one of the things, yeah, decision fatigue, right? So that's something you don't have to worry about with me. If you want it, great. If you don't, see the next coffee guy, uh, wherever that may be. Do you use filtered water? I do. Yep. So where are you getting your beans? Do you have a company here in Lincoln that you're connected with that you're getting the beans and they're doing Absolutely. Uh, Nate Jones at Canyon Coffee. That can't be it. What's your vision for the company in the next couple of years? What's that? What's your vision for the company in the next couple of years? Next couple of years. So obviously, uh, I'd like to have a team of four by by this time next year um, out on the streets with a with a daily route set up. Um, we, I I believe the model isn't big events. I believe the model is a daily route and uh, what I'm calling office hits. Um, so a couple times I've had the opportunity to kind of flesh this out, um, but I, I have the, you know, with everything being on one person, I can be here right now. I could serve all of you in less than 30 minutes um, and, then, and then leave and just go do the next thing. So um, I was able to do uh, two floors of IT folks in less than 20 minutes. Um, and I mean, in total, that was probably about 45 people. Not everyone got coffee, right? But everyone definitely had conversation and questions. Um, so to be able to go in and out and essentially, you know, kind of ninja my way out <laughs> without people even realizing I was there is, is a pretty big deal. Because most of the times with any current catering, coffee catering option, you're going to go pick up one of those travelers. You're going to get the little cups. You're going to get the little creamers. You're going to get all the stuff. And that's really on you, right? Well, I'm taking that completely off your plate. I want you to focus on your event. So let me do all of that. Um, yes, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but you're getting quality coffee. You're getting an experience that you're definitely not going to get anywhere else. And me, right? I, I'm pretty fun, I think. Um, and I, I like to talk, so let's chat. How about security? And do you worry about pickpockets or um, being grabbed on your way to your car with all your cash? Uh, yeah, I mean, not really. I'm not a small person, um, and this is kind of daunting, uh, to be honest. I mean, I, I haven't had anyone really give me that look uh, that makes me feel like I need to bust some moves. So I do have hot coffee readily available, so it may not be pepper spray, but it'll work. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's one of the the big pieces to that whole you know you pay what you want. So I, I first of all when I when I have the opportunity every every time I see you know someone who's down on their luck uh, in on the streets, cup of coffee uh, definitely. Um, and so I, I want to be able to give back in a bigger way that way. Uh, but then also um, the opportunity to to do a lot of those like uh, you know those those really awesome fundraisers where they don't have the ability to pay for something like this but need something like this. So that's when I can step in and I can do that because one thing about regular brewed coffee versus all the drinks at Starbucks is uh, margins. Really good margins with what I do. Um, not so much when you get milk and espresso and all of the flavoring and syrups and stuff involved. So um, you know it costs $17 to fill this. Um, and so if I can make $17 back, I've made my money back. Last question. Community-based uh, group right here. What's the one thing you could uh, use from your community to help you get to the next step? Absolutely. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm a magnet for ideas. So any any ideas you guys think of that I have uh, that I have not presented, absolutely send them my way. Follow us on social media. Um, any event that you may have heard of or be associated with, and we may be a good fit. Give us a call. Uh, we can we can talk through it. If we're not great, we can move on. Um, but at least having the opportunity to get in front of some folks and uh, and really show show them what we can do. He's also got merch for sale, so uh, I've ordered a T-shirt already because I can't wait to wear that logo around town. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Here is a thank you. We want to give you a Focus Sweet coffee mug that you can fill with uh, hot or cold brew. Well, fantastic. Thanks for being here.
thanks everybody for being here. I hope you'll join us next week again. We'll be here again next Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, if you're not on our email list, again, please see me before you leave. Give me your card and I'll add you to our email list. There's no need to run off. Hang around as long as you like. Meet somebody new before you leave. Uh, discuss that next big business deal or come up and get uh, uh, some cold brew from Jeremy or ask him more questions. And I know his business cards are back on the table with the donuts. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. So, yeah, they just had to turn out the day.